Okay, so let's put this thing together. So I've separated out the spindles to where the straightest one's in the middle. Hit the crookedest one out, out that way. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's see if they, if they go in. So these things are super dried, no glue. They're going to uh, expand in the seat and even get tighter. That's if I can get them in right now. There, there. A little bit tight, but that, 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 that's nice, that's nice. Let's see. So I'm trying to get this crook to where, so you got a couple things to look at. You got this crook and we can adjust it after I get it in the chair. But uh, uh, you've also got these flats, and you want these flats, maybe that'll work. You want these flats to line up, too. So, uh, this is the kind of stuff that gave me tendonitis. Here, I usually use a sheet metal vice grip on this. But I'm trying to eliminate some tools, so I'll just use my hands. <clears throat> well, that probably worked. Let's see. I didn't get that one. Let me get the flat lined up. Yeah. I better try to get them right from the first because they're going to be hard to move. So that one, that's probably better for that. Okay, that one could be turned just the least little bit. Now it turn back. Okay, so those flats are doing, doing pretty good. I hope I make this small enough. We'll find out, won't we? Okay, let's see. What do we look like there? Those got to go on. Gotta go in. Okay. I usually do this from. Well, I just turn around, and do it the way. Do it the way I usually do. It. That way, I. You know. Now let's try that again. Well, if I had to cut these things off. Probably, probably would have worked out better. Then I wouldn't have them all hitting about the same time. But maybe I can do it. There we go. So you want to watch this and make sure that this is going to go down in the hole. When you need it, tap that just a little bit. So the problem is, see, you got this side cocked up, which is kicking that post out just a bit, which if you pull it in just too much, you're going to crack that right there. So you got to be careful right here. dead blow. If you got a dead blow, use it here. But since it's flat across through here and I'm hitting it really
really nice and even. How's that look? So that's what you do. You stand back and look at it. And if the spindles don't look right to you, then twist them around. But all those look pretty good to me. So, first thing I'll do is to... Uh, drive a wedge in down here. So I made these wedges bendigo, but I think I got a video on when I made the wedges for the seat. I believe I, believe I showed that. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, split it. I got this old chisel I found walking down to the shop, which is not true. I found it over there in that cabinet. I use it all the time for this. So if you hold that just straight up like that. Perpendicular to the long wood fibers in the mortise. Need to open that up just a tad bit more. Okay. Grab my wedge. Now let's see if I can pound that in. that. I guess it went down enough. I reckon maybe probably when I finish with this I'll try to open that up more and get another wedge down in there. See if I can. But right now I'll just keep going as if that wedge went down fine. Yeah. Got hit that a little straighter with your hammer. That's it. I take my nice little hand saw that I've been using through the whole thing, cut it off, leave it about, I don't know. Lunchtime. Oh, that sounds good. Lunchtime. I'll be back after lunch and show you the rest of this. Well, I had lunch, and so I got an intercom in the shop. For those of you who don't know, a lot of you know that, and uh, it tells me important things like lunch is ready, or uh, I forgot to take the trash out, which is all good, all good thing. Uh, but now we're back, and uh, but 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 I went ahead, and uh, uh, since you don't need to see this whole operation of cutting all those off and wedging them, I just left this one and that one, and so now I'll cut those off and wedge them, and then we'll do the little doming on it, and uh, we'll be able to sit sit down. Uh, so uh, see if I can get this once again using this saw because it's the one I've been using. Uh, not necessarily the saw for the job if you have something else, but it's what I roughed out stock with. And I thought, well, I'm just going to see if I can use it for the whole chair. And uh, it works, you know. Teeth are a little coarse for this right here. And uh, I guess the biggest danger is it jumping off and uh, hitting your hand. 
like I did the other day. Not not with this saw. But working dangerous location. But at least with hand tools, it's stitches instead of losing a finger. Uh, okay, let's split this. So I just take a chisel, get that thing, and this one right here. And you know, one thing I forgot to do, and it's okay, it's just a little insurance, you don't have to do it, but it's really good, especially on these, is you can flare just the upper and lower section of this hole. Just flare it just a little bit, so when you drive that wedge in, it kind of dovetails it in, and it, it can't come out at all. So it's locked in from this side, uh, the way that you fit it, locked in from this side with that little flare. Uh, and then it's going to swell a little bit, and you're going to leave it standing a little proud there, so it'll mushroom a tad bit like a rivet, and uh, no glue necessary. So, there's that one. get a draw knife. Okay, back again here. So, so we can use something to uh, just protect the seat a little bit. Um, and uh, we're just going to just dome this. Uh, draw knife is, once again, the tool, no matter if you're trying to minimize tools or not, draw knife is a tool for this. It's just so fast and perfect. that one just a little high, but I can take it down with the drum. That heard a little bit of different different sound from it. It's because it's a tad bit high. So, 
What's the best way to do it from this side? Get down on my knees and do it down there? Or just kind of uh, push the draw knife? And you can do this with a knife too. Knife works great. Problem is it really puts pressure on my tendonitis there if I use the knife. And the draw knife doesn't do that. I don't believe I got it. Just in time, got somebody starting up a, some lawn equipment out there. Uh, so, uh, there we go. Love this process. Uh, so now I'll uh, paint it. Before I paint it, I found that, uh, so only put a wash coat of whatever color. Uh, just, just one coat, rub it down, pull it. But, I've noticed on prior ones that when I do that, the pine seat has like a yellow tint coming through. I didn't like that in relationship to the oak and others. So uh, I dyed it. And since I'm trying to keep from buying anything, I went out in the yard and I found some walnuts. Got a black walnut tree. In fact, we're blessed with black walnut trees. If you want to call it that, they fall all over the place. And uh, but it make, they make great dyes, and so you can just pick up some walnuts and put them in a pot and boil it, and uh, then put it on the chair, and it worked great. So that's what I'll do, is I'll dye it with that walnut dye, and then I'll put a, uh, uh, the chair that's on the website uh, is, uh, and the chair that's on this YouTube video too, is uh, uh, a slate color from Old Fashioned Milk Paint Company, and uh, that's why I'm going to paint this one too. So. Thanks for watching.